Once upon a time, there was a young, beautiful woman. She had four suitors. She loved her fourth suitor the most. She gave him beautiful robes. She gave him the best delicacies. In fact, she gave him everything. She loved her third suitor as well. Though she showed him off to everybody, she feared that one day he would leave her. Her second suitor was confident, compassionate, and kind. He, she would give him all of her worries and concerns. She would speak to him about all of her difficulties, and she would get helped by him. She commis he commiserated with her and gave her good wisdom. Her first suitor was loyal, but she didn't love him. Though he loved her deeply, she didn't pay attention to him. One day, the beautiful young woman fell ill, gravely ill. She had a sickness unto death. She said to her fourth suitor, I have given you so much. In return for the things that I have given you, can you accompany me? I'm afraid. My days on earth are short. I have little time in which to live. Can you accompany me? He responded by saying, No, I cannot. And he left, never to be seen again. The young woman said to her third suitor, I'm in my dark hour. Please keep me company. And he said, Life is good. Life is great. I cannot waste my time being cooped up with a sick person. And he left. She said to her second suitor, You've helped me in the past before. Now I'm in a grave situation. Can you be with me? Can you keep me company? Because I'm at my life's end. And he said, I cannot help you now, but I will attend your funeral and accompany your body to the grave. That's all that I can do. So the beautiful young woman was aggrieved and saddened. Suddenly she heard a voice that said, I will go with you. I will keep you company. Where you go, I shall go. She looked up and she saw that it was her first suitor. He had become skinny and scrawny due to neglect. And sadly, the young woman said to her first suitor, I wish I had paid attention to you when I had the chance. You have four suitors. Your fourth suitor is your body. You expend so much time and money on your body to keep it alive, to make it beautiful. But in the end, when you die, it's going to abandon you. Your third suitor is your possessions, your wealth, your status in this world. When you die, it too will abandon you. Your second suitor is your family and friends. Though they have been there for you in the past, they can only accompany you to the grave. Who is your first love that is faithful to you as you traverse this life? Though neglected, your first love has been there for you. Who is your first love who accompanies you as you journey in this life? My dear brothers and sisters, each of us must take the long walk home. The long walk home is a journey of faith. It is the journey from this life to the next life. And as you make that journey, you come across things you never expected. You have experiences for which you never prepared yourself. 
as you take such a long walk home, you need a loyal friend. In a pensive mood, have you ever asked yourself, how did I get in this particular situation? I never planned to be here. What went wrong in my life? What did I do to deserve this? What did I do wrong to find myself in this situation? If you are to answer such questions, if you are to face such questions in your life, then you must be sustained by three things. First of all, you must have a spiritual vision. St. Paul says in our text, we know that if the tent which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. When the ancient Jews left slavery in Egypt to go to the promised land that God had said that they would take possession of eventually, they had to traverse a desert. As they went through that desert, they had a temporary structure, the tabernacle, When they got to a place, they would erect the tabernacle, worship and praise God, and meet God at that place. When they left a particular place, they would take it apart and move on. But they looked forward to the time when they got to the promised land. In that promised land, they would establish themselves and their culture and eventually build a permanent structure, a house to God, a sanctuary that would be permanent and stable and real. It is this historical backdrop that informs this first verse that Paul writes in our epistle reading this morning. He says, we too have a tent. We too have a temporary dwelling. It is our body. But we look forward to the permanent house that we shall have, a spiritual home, a spiritual house, a spiritual body given to us by God that will be the permanence of who we are. In the meantime, we have this tent on which we expend so much time and energy taking care of this body, which only in the end abandons us and leaves us. But if we are to make the long journey home, we must have a vision of ourselves that is not informed by this physical body. You are more than the sum experiences of your body. You are more than your body. You are more than your age. You are more than your race. You are more than your gender. You are more than that because you have a permanent body, a permanent spiritual body that is yours eventually, that will be given to you by Christ Jesus when you will be raised up to live and to thrive in that body in the next life. In the meantime, you cannot fully define yourself by this body Because it is dying and falling apart. The bigger vision that you have to have for yourself in order to make it on the long walk home is that you have a body awaiting you that's going to live forever and ever with Christ and all the saints. That is a vision that keeps you going on the long walk home. You need another thing on the long walk home. St. Paul says he has prepared us for this very thing which he has given us, the Spirit, as a guarantee. In other words, you need security. Some of the Jewish people, as they traversed through the desert, lost faith. They wanted security. They wanted to go back to slavery in Egypt, where they had food and they had shelter and clothing. They were willing to abandon their hope and return there. But the few that held on were encouraged by the spiritual food that God had given them. God had given them spiritual food that enabled them to make it and to survive. By the same token, God has given you spiritual food. God has given you the Eucharist, the Holy Communion, which sustains your faith on the long walk home. God has also given you water, the water of baptism, by which you are brought into relationship with God, by which you are given all the promises that Jesus desires to give to all of humanity. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee to you that what Jesus does for all of humanity, Jesus does personally for you. You have eternal life in Jesus Christ. You have the Spirit in Jesus Christ as a guarantee as your sustenance, as you take the long walk home. So that's the source of your security. That's the power by which you're able to engage and still face this life 
which is oftentimes contrary, which sometimes does not make sense and does not measure up in the way that we would like. The security is found in the Holy Spirit, who's, who has given you food and water, spiritual food and spiritual water to sustain you. One final thing you need for the long walk home, and that is, Paul says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Christianity is a relationship of trust and faith. It is trusting the word of God. It is believing that word as though it were true, and it is indeed true. It is staking your life upon that word that it is indeed true. God promises X, and if we believe that God will indeed fulfill X for us, God will do it. God cannot lie and deceive. God will indeed fulfill his word in our life. Faith is at the core of our religion, trusting God. Despite the fact we don't have the evidence, all we have is a promise. The promise from a God who will not lie and deceive. A promise from a God who will indeed perform what he promises. Thelma said it wonderfully last week at our congregational meeting when an issue came up that we debated. She says, where is our faith There has to be faith in this. We have to do things simply based upon faith. We do it because God says we ought to do it. And we respond with faith. That is so true. Jesus says, give and it will be given to you. Jesus says that if you, when you measure, the, 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 the way you measure life, the way you look at life, that's going to be the way it's going to be measured back to you. The way you look at people, if you judge people, well, that's going to happen to you as well. That's all based upon trusting Jesus' word, Jesus' word of faith to us, that we believe that he will indeed fulfill his promises to us. So we don't have to worry about our church. We don't have to, we don't have to get upset and get overly anxious about this or that. We just have to believe and trust and work the word, believe the word of Jesus. And to the extent that we do that, God will provide for our church. That's true for our individual lives as well. We walk by faith and not by sight. Why is this important? It's important for another important reason. Truman Capote, a prominent contemporary writer, said, I have cried more for prayers that have been answered than prayers that were not answered. And what he means by that is this. Be careful what you pray for. Because sometimes when you pray for something, it opens up other possibilities. You may get what you're praying for, but it opens up other possibilities for you. And you have to adjust to those possibilities. And sometimes adjustment causes tears. It causes conflict. And so you have to trust and believe that whatever God places in your life, God is going to work the good. God is going to do the right thing for you. This thing is a thing of trust and faith in God, that God works all things together for the good in order to take the long journey home and to survive the long journey home. Not just to survive it, but to thrive during it with joy and peace and confidence in Christ Jesus. You must have a spiritual vision of yourself You must have security that comes to you by way of the Holy Spirit, which is yours through baptism. And then you must have faith and essential trust in God that all things work together for the good and that when you believe God's word, God will indeed fulfill that word in your life. Amen.